Good morning, my lovelies. Hope you guys are having an amazing, terrific Tuesday, a transformation Tuesday, a, all sorts of great things, right? Let's do our alliterations because y'all know I love alliterations. I'm Kelly Frick of Kelly Frick Connect, and I am here to transform your health to remind us that we are worthy no matter what the circumstances and the situation is that is going on. And right now, we are all dealing with a lot of stuff. I want us to think about something for a moment before I even go into touch. Um, something that I was uh, being reminded about um, last night during a uh, class that I'm taking, an autoimmune class with um, the wonderful Christina Sessoms. So in this class, we were talking about anytime a person starts a program, whether it's a diet, whether it's a goal, whether it's a health journey goal, whether it's a business goal, whatever, right? There's always that 21 day slump, right? So what that means is the first week, you're super excited about doing something, right? But there's this newness, trying to figure things out. The second week, you've gotten your routine down. You're, you know, really getting into the groove of it. And then the third week, you hit this slump, this whole, ugh, when is this ever going to end? Or, ugh, can I continue to do this, right? So we are, many of us are in that third week slump right? Um, those of us that have been uh, with the whole quarantine, lockdown, however you want to call it, but we're going to shift that mindset even. We're going to totally change that verbiage. Um, but for this moment, uh, what, what we're going to talk about the third week slump of how can we shift our mindset, all right? And so I want you to be thinking about that, really having it resonate in what you're going to do to shift that mindset this week, um, to be able to see the potential, to see the greatness that are gonna, that's gonna come from all of this. And one of the things that we're gonna talk about today is touch, the power of touch. All right, so with the coronavirus going on, we are in a culture of no touch, right? It's been going on for quite a while, but right now coronavirus is definitely accelerating this no touching business. And that's a problem. Why is this such a problem? Because touch has a profound benefit for us as human beings. For the last few decades though, it's become increasingly where we're just being really cautious about social touching, right? Um, for multiple different re reasons. But with coronavirus here now, it's creating this greater issue, this greater fear, and it's getting worse, right? Um, we've already started, there's a lot of people are avoiding even handshaking each other, right? And understandable, right? So, but the question is, how is this going to affect us long-term? What are gonna be the long-term implications for how we are going to interact hands-on once we are outside of the time and space of quarantine or lockdown, right? So let's look at first why touch is so important. It helps us share how we feel about others and it enhances our verbal communication. This is super important. So like a touch on the arm when we're comforting somebody, all right, it shows us that it shows us and them that we really care. And so then the benefit from physical touch is something that can spread throughout our lifespan, right? It There's a huge body of evidence. You can just search, um, do a Google search of touch, science of touch, and how it has all these amazing um, implications of our health. It has the ability to affect us both short and long term in our health and well-being, right? Um, in babies alone, there's tons and tons of studies of showing how it helps with the brain development, how very important it is for their brain development as well as that nature versus nurture development, right? The emotional impact of social touch is ingrained in our biology. This is super important because there's tons of evidence that shows how it triggers the release of oxytocin, which is the hormone that de decreases our responses to stress. And what's going on right now? We're all under a tremendous amount of stress, right? So in fact, touch has been shown to be able to cushion our stress levels um, so that it helps us not feel so stressed. All right, so it reduces also the feelings of social exclusion, even increases the food intake among the elderly people who are living in nursing homes. This is crucial to understand because 
they're the ones that we're concerned about having the highest risk right now, right? They're getting the least amount of touch right now. So given how essential social touch is to our well-being, it's important to ensure that it is a part of our everyday life, right? So the last few decades though, we've seen a decrease in social touch. And the question is why? Part of it has to do with our technology, right? We've become so technolog technologically focused that we've become socially disconnected. We're able to easily hop on Zooms. We're able to easily hop on FaceTime. We're able to easily do virtual workshops, things like that, right? Where we're not interacting in the same space with each other. And we're not being able to touch each other as often in just that greeting somebody at your door, right? So the decline in touch is primarily due also to the fear that it may result in accusations of inappropriateness, right? Such fear has been has been melding in our society for quite a while. And Grant, there is, you know, lots of concerns and stuff like that, but when we live in that fear, remember our brain can only live in fear or love and not both of them at the same time. So when we're living in fear, we're not open and receptive to love. So when we're living in that fear, people are then therefore resisting touching others of risking having somebody, you know, misinterpret that touch. Um, that message is simple of avoiding hugging a coworker or a colleague who is upset and to not pat somebody on the back for a job well jump well well a job well done right so all of that is being avoided already and then you add to it the impact of coronavirus and we have yet another reason to be fearful right of touching others while we should remain careful we have to make an effort right now an even greater effort, a very mindful effort to not let it get out of control. Um, because a lot of people are suffering high anxiety right now, high levels of anxiety about this virus, and touch is a way for us to be able to reduce this. And the longer this goes on, the more likely we're gonna associate um, social touch and a sense of negativity. Why is this important? We need to remember just like things in history, right? We need to remember that eventually we're gonna forget about the virus but we're still gonna be weary of social touch and so by making sure that we don't forget um, we're, not, we're able to then separate the negative association that is going to create in our minds about touch all right so even though it's not advisable for us to be able to just go about touching everybody and anybody right now, right, during all of this, um, especially people who are elderly, who are at risk and stuff like that, physical contact with the loved ones that we have under our same roof is still super, super important and imperative. Um, so more broadly, we need to understand that the key is to be aware that negative life events such as this coronavirus could impact our social touch in the long run in a very undesirable way. So bringing this to the forefront of our mind can counterbalance what may otherwise generate a negative memory about touch because we don't want that negative memory, right? So once this is all over, once that we are able to move forward with our new way of doing things, right? One vital challenge will be to reset our thinking about touch, to keep in mind that it's important. After all, a hug may be just what we need to move on from all of this, right? All of this experience, all of this trauma. So before I go, I challenge you today to hug your family members, right? Those under the same roof with you every hour. Make it last and hold that hug. Better yet, dance. Dance a waltz, a tango, some sort of dance that you are holding each other for several minutes, all right? And just being able to enjoy being in the moment. And I challenge you, if you share it here on Kelly Bright Connect, you will receive a surprise gift in the mail. 
All right. So also don't forget to check out my new monthly coaching group um, program that is going to be at the top of Kelly Frick Connect page um, for lots more mindful um, tactics, mindful ways to be able to approach our health and our worthiness, um, especially during these times. You guys have a beautiful and blessed day, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. All right. Take care. God bless.